Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about what happened to 26-year-old Maria Esperanza Diaz. Now one of my friends actually reached out to me because she knew Maria in person and she really wanted me to cover this case and bring it more attention. At the moment, there really isn't that much news coverage about Maria, so I hope by making this video I can spread awareness on Maria's case and keep the momentum going. So my friend reached out to me and she was able to get me in contact with Maria's sister, Livia, who is absolutely amazing. She is such a kind person and I know she's going to be watching this video. I know her family and friends of Maria are going to be watching the video. So please try to be as respectful as you can in the comment section and let's just show the family as much love as we can. Now I don't know if this video is going to get monetized, but if it doesn't, I did add a sponsor to the video so that way we can ensure that there is some type of you know funds and money that can go back to Maria's family. So before we get into the video I quickly just want to thank today's sponsor NordVPN. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. NordVPN is a virtual private network that protects your internet connection and privacy online. I never realized how vulnerable I was making myself to hackers and other threats when using the internet at home and in public. It's so important to step up your privacy game so when you're browsing through a VPN, your traffic is encrypted so no one can see what you do online. It's also super easy to do. First you download NordVPN and then you can choose from over 5,000 servers in 60 countries to connect to. You can connect to a server near you for better internet speed or you can connect to a server far away if you're looking to access more content. The speed is amazing and you can connect it to your iPhone, your tablet, your iPad, your computer, laptop. You can even connect it to an Android TV. NordVPN just added a new feature called Threat Protection which blocks intrusive ads and web trackers. So when you download a file, Threat Protection inspects it for malware and blocks the malicious ones. So besides keeping you safe online, NordVPN also allows you to get access to TV shows, movies, and other content that might not be in your country. So for example, I always say that Netflix in Mexico is way better than Netflix in the US. They just have more shows that I'm interested in, they have more novelas that I can't watch over here. So with NordVPN, I can connect to a server in Mexico and now I have access to all these novelas that I wouldn't have been able to see if I was connected to the US. So if you guys want to try out NordVPN, you guys can click the link down below to get an exclusive deal. It's also risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. So Maria Esperanza Diaz, also known as Mice by her family and her friends, was born on July 6, 1995. She was from El Tigre, which is a city of Venezuela located in the state of Anzuategui, which I hope I'm pronouncing right. She lived there for many years, but after some time, she decided to move to Necuen, Argentina, where her mom and her older sister Livia lived. Maria's family described her as just being an absolutely beautiful person inside and out. Her cousin says that they would all say, Oh, Maria es la más bonita de la familia, which means Maria, she's a pretty one of the family. She was just absolutely beautiful, intelligent, hardworking, and just a great friend and person to be around. She graduated with honors in accounting, so when she moved to Argentina, she worked as an accountant for a large telecommunications company. Te digo que es algo desgarrador porque más era una chica llena de mucha vida y era una chica súper centrada. Mi hermana era, era contadora, tenía un buen trabajo acá en Argentina, eh, estaba bien, vivía sola, era independiente, tenía su departamento, todas sus like I said, she was a very hard worker and was always looking for better opportunities. This is when she started looking into moving to the United States in hopes of finding a better job and, as they say, having the American dream. However, it was pretty difficult for Maria to obtain a visa. She had already tried twice but had been denied, which of course was frustrating for Maria because she really wanted to go to the United States and, of course, she wasn't going to give up, so on her third try, she finally got approved. Now she was able to get a visa and move to the city of Charlotte in North Carolina. The reason she decided to move to Charlotte is because she had a childhood friend named Victoria that was already living there and had already established a life. 
So this friend Victoria was going to let Maria live at her apartment. She was going to help her get a job and pretty much just lay a foundation in the United States. And the family felt very comfortable with this because now Maria had someone she could depend on in Charlotte. She wasn't just arriving to a new state by herself without knowing anybody. So, you know, of course the family was sad that she was going to be leaving, but they were also very proud and excited for her. So on Friday, April 22nd, 2022, Maria made the long journey from Argentina to Charlotte, North Carolina and arrived at around 5 p.m. As soon as she landed, she FaceTimed her sister Livia to let her know that she had arrived safely. She also showed her around Victoria's apartment through FaceTime, showed her where she was going to be sleeping, you know, the neighborhood, and it was a really nice area. Like Maria was super excited to be in this new house, this new area. It was beautiful. It was very safe and you know she was just so excited to have finally arrived later that afternoon Livia sends a message to Maria asking her what her plans are for the rest of the day and Maria tells her that she's going straight to work which Livia thought was pretty strange because you know Maria had just taken this long journey from Argentina to Charlotte which is a really long flight so you know most people would normally you know rest that day get settled in unpack but Maria was going straight to work Mm -hmm. Ella llegó a Charlotte el día 22, si sí, día 20, viernes 22, mm -hmm. a las 18 horas. Y me avisa ella, eh, hermana, llegué, este, estoy acá, eh, me mandó un WhatsApp. Después, cuando estaba en el departamento con ella, me, me llamó por videollamada. Después me pasó un mensaje luego más tarde de que había ido a trabajar. A mí me pareció eso extraño de que una persona que está recién llegando a un sitio, un viaje tan cansón, uh -huh. eh, llegue directamente a trabajar, o sea, ¿sabes cuál es el afán? Es algo que a mí me causó un poco de ruido, pero bueno, dije... So the job that Maria got in Charlotte was working as a waitress at a bar slash restaurant. Her friend Victoria had actually worked at this bar for many years, so in a way, she kind of had the hookup and was able to get Maria this job. Victoria didn't work there anymore, but she still knew people, so she wanted to take Maria to the bar as soon as possible to, you know, get her settled in, introduce her to the other co-workers, and, you know, just get everything set up. So that same day that Maria arrived to Charlotte, a couple of hours after her flight, Victoria drove her straight to work. She introduced Maria to a couple of the co-workers and then she left Maria there alone. Now we're not sure how long Maria worked that shift, we're not sure you know how she got home. She didn't have a car, she didn't know the area, I mean she had literally just gotten there so, so again we're not really sure how long she worked that day but that's pretty much what she did on her first day in Charlotte. The next morning on Saturday, April 23rd, Livia called Maria just to check in and ask her how her first day of work had gone. Maria says that she had an amazing time, she made $45 and was just really excited to continue the job. She told Livia that later that night, her and Victoria were gonna meet up with some guy friends and go out for drinks and, you know, just kind of get to know the town. Now, Maria did not know these guys. These guys were Victoria's friends. Maria had never met them before. So later that night, Victoria drives Maria to work and a couple of hours later, she swings by, picks her up, and they go back to the apartment. When they get to the apartment, they start getting ready for their night out and then the two guys come to the apartment and pick them up. Their first stop of the night was back at Maria's job. We're not really sure why they decided to go to the restaurant slash bar that Maria worked at to have drinks, but that's where they decided to go. So they're there, they're having fun, they're having some drinks, and then they decide to go to a new bar called Cos Bar. They get to the cos bar and according to Victoria, everyone is having a really good time. They're getting to know each other, they're having some yummy drinks, like everything is going well. However, as the night continued, Victoria said that she started to feel sick. Now there are some reports and statements saying that Victoria had recently undergone an operation. I'm not sure if that's why she was feeling sick. So she told Maria, listen, I don't feel good. I think I'm gonna go home. Now according to her, Maria told her, all right, you can go. I'm gonna stay here with the guys. So Victoria told her that's fine and told Maria that she would call her an Uber home later. Then at around 1 a.m., Victoria left the bar. Now it was just Maria by herself with these two guys that she had just met. 
Two hours later, at around 3 a.m., Victoria sends Maria a WhatsApp message asking her how it's going and what time she's coming home. According to her, Maria replied saying she was still going to be there for a while and to just wait up. Victoria tried to stay up, but eventually fell asleep. When she wakes up later that morning, she realizes that Maria had never made it home. She starts sending Maria WhatsApp messages asking her where she's at, but she doesn't get a response back. Then she decides to FaceTime Maria, but instead of Maria picking up the phone, a paramedic answers. And what this paramedic tells Victoria is just absolutely heartbreaking. It turns out that earlier that morning at around 8.18 a.m., the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, also known as CMPD, found an unconscious woman at a house on Glasgow Green Lane. They did everything they could to save the woman, but they eventually declared her as deceased. They also found a bag of drugs next to the body and believe the cause of death was an overdose. This woman was later identified as 26-year-old Maria Esperanza Diaz. Livia says that that morning, her and her family were leaving church, and that's when they got the call. It was Victoria on FaceTime letting them know that Maria had been found dead. Livia says that she just couldn't believe it. She thought that Victoria was playing some type of cruel joke. She thought that it was a prank. Like, she could not understand how her sister was dead when she had literally spoken to her yesterday, and she had just arrived to the United States. She honestly thought it was a joke, but since Victoria was on FaceTime, she showed her the outside of the house where Maria had been found, you know, with the cop cars, you know, with the ambulance, with everything, and that's when Livia knew that it was real. But how could this have happened? Maria had literally arrived to the United States just two days earlier, and now she was gone. Livia and her family were completely heartbroken, but they were also confused. Maria did not have a history of doing drugs. She was a very healthy, young woman who took care of her body and would never voluntarily take drugs. So the fact that police believe she overdosed and she was found lying next to a bag of drugs just did not make sense to the family. Even Maria's friends, her cousins, her classmates from school, I mean anyone that knew Maria has come out and said that she did not do drugs. They all believe that Maria did not do this out of her own free will. I don't know what is happening, I don't know what is happening, but de que ella fue allá y era una drogadicta y se mató, pues no, esto no, no, es, no es el caso de ella. Now the family is also confused as to how Maria arrived to this house. It is in a nice neighborhood, nothing too crazy ever happens there, like it's pretty safe. It was just this specific house that at the moment had been abandoned. It wasn't unkept, it wasn't falling apart, it just didn't have any furniture inside and no one had been living there for a while. However, when reporters spoke to some of the neighbors, they claimed they recently saw people coming and going from the house and that they had also left the garage door open for some time. Now, I don't know if any of the neighbors are able to provide a description of the people coming and going or if they have surveillance cameras that point to the house and can show the people coming and going. We don't really know, but they did think that it was strange that, you know, all this time the house had been abandoned, but then suddenly there was people hanging out there. But the real question is how did Maria get to this house? There's no way she would have known that it was an abandoned house and that it was a perfect spot to go do drugs by herself. Like I said, she had literally just arrived to the United States two days ago. She had never been to Charlotte before, she didn't know the area, she didn't know the neighborhood, so there's just no way she would have known about this abandoned house on her own. The house is also 20 minutes away driving from the cost bar, so there's no way that she walked there on her own. She didn't own a car, she didn't call an Uber, I mean, someone must have taken her to this house. Presumimos también que la persona que la llevó ahí sabía que esa casa estaba sola. Ella por su voluntad no va a llegar ahí sola a matarse o a morirse o a provocarse, qué sé yo, una sobredosis. So the family has spoken to Victoria and they've asked her to, you know, kind of clarify what happened that night. Now, Victoria says that she only knew the guy that was driving the car that picked them up. He was actually her friend, but the second guy, she did not know. That was the first time she had ever met the second guy and he was pretty much just, you know, a friend of a friend. So she really doesn't know much about him. From my understanding, Maria's family has not spoken to either one of the guys, so they can't really get any more answers or, you know, clarification as to what happened after Victoria left the bar. 
The police say they are speaking to any witnesses and that the case is still open. They still see it as an overdose, but are waiting for the toxicology reports and the autopsy to be done, which might take a while. They estimate that the autopsy will be completed within 60 to 90 days, which is just crazy that the family has to wait so long to find out how their loved one died. The CMPD did make a public statement, which they say they normally don't do, but since there are a lot of questions in this case and a lot of people are searching for answers, they decided to make a public statement. They said, We are waiting for the toxicology reports and at this time, there is no evidence of a dishonest act in the death of Miss Diaz Mendoza. All the evidence in this case is consistent with the death of Miss Diaz Mendoza being an overdose. So, according to the police, they don't believe that any foul play was involved. At this point, no hay nada que indique de que la señorita Díaz fue eh, falleció en otro lugar y fue llevada ahí. Eh, todo indica que ella llegó ahí por su propia cuenta y voluntaria y que allí fue donde ocurrió la situación esta con la sobredosis de, de droga. En esta situación, las personas que se han entrevistado hasta ahora y la evidencia que se ha recogido en, el, en, el, en la escena donde encontraron el cuerpo de la señorita Díaz eh, y después eh, con lo, la evidencia que se pudo recuperar de su cuerpo y, y de, para toxicología, eh, todo indica hasta ahora que no, no hubo ninguna, ninguna situación de fuerza eh, para ella, que fue una sobredosis. Now, we don't know what really happened. All we know is that the family just wants answers and they just want the truth. They want to know how Maria got to this house, who drove her there, who gave her the drugs, who let her know about this abandoned house, how did she leave the bar? Like, they just have so many questions. And Maria passed away in April, and now June is almost over, and they still don't have any answers. Police are still checking Maria's cell phone, which could help them put together a timeline of Saturday night and that early Sunday morning. Now, it's pretty difficult for Maria's family to stay on top of the investigation and communicate with the CMPD since they are all the way in Argentina and in Venezuela. It's not like they're there physically in person talking to the CMPD, talking to the investigators, and, you know, applying pressure on them. One of Maria's cousins, Wilmay, lives in Miami, so she was the one that went to Charlotte to identify the remains of her cousin. She said she also spoke to Victoria and tried to understand the timeline of what happened the night Maria passed away, but it still doesn't make sense to her. Maria's older brother Alejandro and her sister Livia have been doing whatever they can to keep the momentum going in their sister's case and just keep the story alive. Alejandro still lives in Venezuela, so he has been doing video interviews with Telemundo and other news outlets to talk about his sister's death and ask for the public's help. He is asking the American justice system to help clarify the case. He says that his sister had very little time in the United States and the movements she made had to be instigated by someone. Why was she left alone? Alejandro just wants people to know that besides the fact that Maria was his sister, she was also a human being. She was a person full of life with a desire to live and now she's not here anymore. Es que no lo veamos como eh, María Esperanza, la hermana de nosotros, la, la hermana de Alejandro. Veámoslo como una latina, un ser humano joven que fue a Estados Unidos y en un día, dos días, aparece muerta en, en extrañas circunstancias y queremos alerta, alertar a otras personas de que no pase también queremos justicia the family is asking the authorities to check the surveillance cameras to see who she left with and how. Like I said, they 100% believe that Maria did not take these drugs out of her own free will. Para nosotros lo que pensamos es que capaz pudo estar distraída, eh, no tenía la experiencia, vuelvo y te repito, ya nunca había trabajado como mesera, eh, como, qué sé yo, en, en un bar o un restaurante, nunca jamás lo hizo. Uh -huh. Y pensamos que al encontrarse sola, la ven así, pudieron haberse aprovechado de ella y colocarle algo en alguna bebida, en algún vaso. Someone took her to this abandoned house, someone gave her these drugs, and someone left her there alone. As I said, the family has been able to speak with Victoria about what happened that night, but she hasn't come out and made any public statements or done any interviews. This news channel called Progreso Hispano tried to get in contact with Victoria, but she told them to stop contacting her because she was going through a difficult time and they needed to respect that. 
Now, I'm not saying that Victoria was involved or that she's hiding something. I really have no idea. I don't know her personally, but what I do know is that the family just wants her to be honest. They hope that she isn't covering for the two guys and that she's being as honest as possible with them. Hay muchas interrogantes que nosotros no hacemos porque ella no apareció. Ella no apareció ni en un hotel, ni en una casa habitada, sino que apareció en una casa desolada, sola, abandonada. Sinceramente, justicia. La verdad, si alguien, que estamos muy seguros, alguien le hizo daño, que aparezcan los culpables o el culpable. Eh, si alguien le hizo daño, estoy muy seguro de eso. Y que se dé con la verdad. Es lo único que nosotros, que sean objetivos. Y, y que, se, que se diga la verdad, que se diga la verdad que fue lo que pasó en justicia. Estamos muy seguros que a María le hicieron daño. So for now, the investigation remains open and police continue to believe that Maria passed away from an overdose. So what can we do to help? Well, Maria's family, as well as a community from Argentina and Venezuela, don't want her case to be swept under the rug and forgotten about. They're hoping the police don't have tunnel vision and will actually investigate as deep as they can to see if any type of foul play was involved. We hope by making this video, we can keep the momentum going and let the CMPD know that people are still looking for answers and we aren't just going to forget about what happened to Maria. There's this news reporter from Telemundo Charlotte named Jorge Vélez that has been doing an amazing job at staying on top of the case. He's also been speaking with Maria's family. He's been talking to the police, talking to the neighbors. I mean, he is doing whatever he can to keep Maria's story on the news. So I think his reporting has been amazing. I will link his Instagram down below in case you guys want to check him out and stay up to date with what he's posting. Maria's family is hoping to bring her back to Venezuela where she can be properly laid to rest and be with her family. However, they can't get any of the paperwork or the permits they need to fly Maria's body back to Venezuela until the autopsy is done, which like I said, could take between 60 to 90 days or even more. Now, the cost of flying Maria from Charlotte to Venezuela is high. It's going to be very expensive. It could be anywhere from $25,000. It could be more. It could be less. And that's not even including the cost of the funeral. So it is a lot of money. And the family does want to open a GoFundMe to help them raise the funds to do this process. However, they haven't opened it yet because, like I said, they still don't know the exact cost for the permits and the paperwork and, you know, all that stuff. So they didn't want to open the GoFundMe without knowing the exact amount. That way they don't ask people for more than they need. However, the family told me to go ahead and post a video without the GoFundMe open. That way we can keep the momentum going, keep Maria's case alive, and you know, keep talking about what happened to her. They didn't want me to wait until the GoFundMe was open because like I said, it could take them a couple of months to get the proposal. So for now, of course, I will let you know as soon as it opens. That way we can show support to Maria's family and if you can donate that would be absolutely amazing if not by sharing this video sharing Maria's photo sharing the GoFundMe you know just showing the family as much support and love as we can also as I mentioned earlier the money from the sponsorship will be saved and given to Maria's family later so yeah, I will keep you guys posted on that, but that's pretty much all the information we have for today's video. If you know anything that can help move this case forward, please reach out to the CMPD or you can call the Charlotte Crime Stoppers and leave an anonymous tip. All of that information will be linked down below. If you would like to share Maria's story on social media, you guys can use this photo and use the hashtag Justicia para Mais. She was a young woman that came to the United States in hopes of finding a better life and this is what happened. It's so unfair, it's not right, and her family needs answers and they need closure. My thoughts and prayers go out to Maria's family. Livia, thank you so much for trusting in me to share your sister's story. She seemed like a beautiful person inside and out and we will keep her name alive. All right, you guys, that's pretty much all I have for today's video. Thank you guys again for being here and listening to Maria's story. I truly appreciate it and I know Maria's family does as well. All right, you guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.